All right, hello everyone. You're here with Coach Calvin, AKA the Game Changer of Education. Here today to explain how to play NBA Math Hoops. Now, NBA Math Hoops is a fast paced basketball board game that helps students learn their math facts while they're playing the board game. So, uh, first of all, I wanna walk you through what you see in front of you right here. So first, and foremost, the game box that you will receive will look like this. Now we do have an updated logo, so you'll see a different logo on the front, but this is the game board that you will receive. Now, inside of the game board are all of these things right here that I'm gonna to explain to you. So, um, one, of the thing, one of the main things that comes with the, with the game board is the board. We call this the court. Um, on one side of the court, we have even numbers. And if you notice, they have different colors. And we have an odd side of the court, and once again, different numbers. Uh, in the game box, you will also receive two player tokens, one NBA and one WNBA. And I'm gonna set those right back, right here. And you're gonna receive a spinner. This is how you actually take the shots with this spinner here. You will also have two dice, one red and one blue. And that's how you come up with the math equations. And I'll explain that later. Um, if you notice, there's some player cards right here. Uh, you will receive a pack of player cards. Um, so there will be 64 cards in that pack and that'll be enough for you to uh, do your draft. And so uh, you will also receive two shot planners. These shot planners are actually how you do the math problems, right on here. And then you create your shot with these. If you notice, there's one on both sides. And you will also receive a scoreboard, and you can put the scoreboard together easily. And this is how you track the score during the game. And you will also receive these salt timers. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use these today, but the more comfortable your students get with playing NBA math hoops, um, you can add the shot clock to the game um, when the students get a little bit more comfortable. So I wouldn't suggest using these in the beginning, but after a few weeks of playing, then I would add this to make the game more intense. So, um, the player cards. Uh, let me show you what a player card looks like. So I'm gonna use Stephen Curry's player card. Now, each player card has the real stats of that player. So if you notice here, um, um, the field goal percentage are the two point shots of that player. The three point percentage is of course the three point percentage of that player and then the free throw percentage is right here. Now, if you look at this circle graph right here, the orange, the whole orange area represents the two point shot. The black line area though, represents the three point shot. And what happens throughout the game is you put this spinner here on top and normally you would lay it flat like that on the board. But for the video purposes, I wanted to show you like this. If he was taking a two point shot, you would give it a flick like that and it needs to land in the orange area. And it looks like he missed that one. Sometimes you got to check it to make sure. But for a two-point shot, it must land in the orange area. But for a three-point shot, it must land in the black line area. So if it lands in this little slither orange area right here, uh, and it's a three-point shot, that's actually a missed shot. So let me set that player card right back there. Now, the way you... The way you should draft your player cards are based on the stats. So pretty much you're gonna, when you receive that pack of cards, those 64 cards, you will lay all the player cards out and you should lay them on this side because you got one side, which is the poster of that player, which has nothing to do with the game. Cool shot, cool photo, but has nothing to do with the game. This side is most important. So what you'll wanna do is lay out all the cards um, when I taught this program, I laid them out 
Um, I laid all the gold cards on one table. I laid all of the red cards on one table, of course, with the stat side. I laid all of the blue and purple cards flat on a table so that everyone could compare, could compare which blue card is the best, which purple card is the best, which red card is the best, and so on. And then, um, of course, the green card. So I want to explain this really quick. The red and gold cards are your guards. The blue and blue and purple cards are your forwards, and the green card is your center. So you need to draft five players to complete your team, and they have and one there needs to be one of every color. And remember when I was explaining about the numbers on the court and how they're color coded. There's the connection. The colors of the players are the same colors that are on the court. So there's that connection, and that's what makes the game so fun. Um, so um, I forgot to say one thing. Uh, this is a, a basketball of Learn Fresh. Learn Fresh is our actual education company. We make board games to keep kids excited about learning. And our premier product, of course, is NBA Math Hoops. So. Let's dive into week three of our NBA Math Hoops webinar. Now, what I've created is a battle. Um, I go by two names, Coach Calvin and the Game Changer of Education. So Coach Calvin is actually this team, and the Game Changer of Education is this team. The first week, Coach Calvin won. The second week, the Game Changer of Education won. So, this is the third week, and I'm going to teach you how to play the game by playing myself. <laughs> so um, to start the game off, um, each team grabs one die, and whoever rolls the higher number goes first. So let's start with that. Well, Coach Calvin rolled a zero, a zero and the game changer of education rolled a seven. So that means. The game changer of education gets to start first because his number was higher. And since it's seven, you get to start on that odd side of the court because seven is an odd number. So pretty much whoever rolls the higher number, that's the side of the court that you'll start on. So since NBA Math Hoops is played in 20 minutes total, two 10 minute halves, I'm going to set my timer here to, um, to keep the the game on our correct time. Also, um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box. I have everyone muted at the moment so that we can get through uh, this game and, and uh, you guys can understand what's going on here. So, it's, you sh the timer should start as soon as the dice hit the table. So I'm gonna roll, take, game changer's gonna get his roll and now we're gonna start the time. So the game changer rolled a seven and a six. So now what you need to do is with your shot planner, you need to write those numbers. We're gonna write seven and six in the roll area just like that. Now we've gotta do some math problems. What is seven plus six? 13. What is seven take away six? One. What is seven times six? 42. And when you divide seven into six, you don't get a whole number. And what we allow students to do when, if they don't understand how to divide just yet, we allow them to put a slash mark through that. Um, but when you start learning how to divide, and round, we would like you to put that number there. So when you divide, you would get, I'm gonna show you here. Oh, sorry, one second. So six goes into seven one time, and then you would subtract and you would get one right there. And then you put a zero here, bring that zero down, and six goes into 10, 
one time. So you would put 1.1 and 1.1, of course, is rounded to one. So the same number that's right there, we're gonna write that one right there. Okay, now here's the interesting part. You cannot use these two numbers in the row area. You can only use the numbers that you've done your math on. So here's what happens. Since we are on the odd side of the court, we need to look for an odd number. So the odd numbers that we see here are 13 and one. Everybody see that? 13 and one are the odd numbers. Now, let's put our shot planner back, back down and set our marker there because we need to find 13 and one on our court. One is a gold card, which is Skylar. So we're gonna leave this one here just in case. And 13 is a two point shot with Brittany Griner. So let's compare these stats real quick. A two point shot from Brittany Griner, her stats are, her field goal percentage is a 54%. So 54% is pretty good. Now Skylar Diggins, she would have to shoot a three point shot, but her three point percentage is a 29%. So would you rather take a 29% three point shot or would you rather take a 54% two point shot? Well, I'm going with the 54% 54, 54 two point shot. And actually it's right by the rim. So pretty much that's like a dunk. <laughs> and usually, uh, Basketball players don't miss those dunks when they go up. So now I'm going to put Skylar's card back because we're not going to use her, but we are going to use Brittany Griner. And remember, it needs to land in the orange area for a two-point shot, anywhere in the orange area. So let's go with our first shot. Brittany Griner for the dunk. Boom. Dunked it. So I'm going to set that player card right back here. And I'm going to give the game changer two points, and we are on the board. Let's go. <laughs> now, Coach Calvin has the ball. So let's see what happens. All right. Coach Calvin rolled a five and a five. Now, remember, we're going to write five in the roll area, just like that, a five and a five. And we've got to do the math. Five plus five is 10. Five minus five is zero. Five times five is 25. And when you divide five divided by five, you get one. Now, since Coach Calvin is on the even side of the court, we need to find the even numbers. And remember, we can't use the roll numbers. We can only use the numbers that we've done our math with. And the only even number there is 10. So that is our only option. I'm going to set my shot planner back down. And I'm going to set my marker right back. And now I need to find the number 10 on the court. The number 10 is right here, right in front of the free throw line. And it's blue. So of course, what card do I need? My blue card. My blue card is another WNBA player, Elena Del Don. And she's an amazing WNBA player, by the way. Her field goal percentage is very high, too. It's a 48%. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set my player token on the 10. Don't forget to do that. Put it on the spot, because if you don't, it's an invisible shot, and it's not a made shot. You have to put the player token on that spot. Now I'm going to put the spinner right on top. Just like that. And remember, it needs to land in the blue, the orange area to make the shot. Let's go. Floater. Oh, it rolled out and popped out. Wow. I thought she was going to nail that shot. But that happens in the game sometimes. And that's OK. Now, the game changers got the ball in here. And he rolls a seven and a zero. 
Now, a seven and a zero, I'm gonna write in the roll area. Seven, zero. Seven plus zero, of course, is seven. Seven minus zero, of course, is seven. Seven times zero, of course, is zero. And seven divided by zero, a lot of people think it's zero, but it's actually undefined. And when it's an undefined number, we don't put zero, we put a line through it. It's undefined, so you can't do it. So we only have one option. And good thing it's a seven because we're on the odd side of the court. So here's what happens. I'm gonna look for the seven. The seven is purple and it's a three point shot in the corner, one of my favorite spots to shoot threes. And it's with our player, Natalie Achanwa. Now, her three point percentage, wow, it doesn't exist. She doesn't have a three point percentage. So that means that we can't even take the shot. So that means that it's a turnover, which means I have to put her player card back and the game changer does not get an option of a shot now. And Coach Calvin gets the ball back. No big deal. Just a quick <laughs> turnover. <laughs> so Coach Calvin's glad about that. With two minutes left in the first half, he gets the ball back and rolls a nine and a four. A nine and a four. This might help out. Now, we're going to write a nine here and a four. Nine plus four is 13. Nine minus four is five. Nine times four is 36. And when you divide, remember to always put the larger number inside of the house. That kind of helps, you know, with the division there. Four goes into nine two times. And we put our eight there and then we subtract, get a one. Then we bring our zero down. Four goes into 10 two times, which is eight there. And you get two left over. Now, 2.2 is rounded to what? Two, of course. So that would be the number we put right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase that there and put this right back. But I'm not gonna put it back just in case, not yet, because we need to find out where we're gonna shoot. So since Coach Calvin is on the even side of the court, we've got two even numbers there. And it's 36 and two. Those are the two even numbers that we can take a shot with. So let's find what 36 and two are. Uh, two is a three point shot with Stephen Curry at, 40, at 42%. And 36 is a blue shot, a blue player card, which is Elena Del Dine. She gets another chance, possibly, at 48%. So I've got to make a decision. Would I rather shoot a shot to tie the game at 48%? Or should I take a three-point shot with Stephen Curry, which is one of my favorite players, to take the lead? I'm going with the three-point shot. So I'm going to move my player token right on the number two, and I'm going to put Elena Del Dine back. She missed my last shot there. So, uh, and by the way, this will be the last shot for the first half. And let's see if Stephen Curry can take the lead and help Coach Calvin win the game. Remember, it needs to land in a black line area for the three-point shots. So I'll get a little bit closer so we can see this last shot of the first half. All right. Curry for the three. And he misses it. Good try, big fella. But, you know, even in the NBA, the players don't make every shot. So the first half is over. We have a score of two to zero. Coach, uh, the game changer of education is in the lead, two to zero. And here's what happens at halftime. At halftime, we kind of switch the court around. So the best way to say that is if, if you had the even side in the first half, you're now on the odd side. If you have the odd side in the first half, you're now on the even side. And here's an easy way to do it. Done. <laughs> we put those player tokens back. We put the dice back on the table. 
And now the game get, gets even more interesting because the sides have switched. So since the game changer had the ball first because he rolled a seven. Now coach Calvin has the ball first in the second half. And I'm going to start the timer now. As soon as the dice hit the table. And now we, we're going to play our second half. And remember, each half is 10 minutes, and the total game is played in 20. So uh, Coach Calvin rolled a seven and a six. And remember, he's on the odd side of the court now. A seven and a six. Seven plus six is 13. Seven minus six is one. Seven times six is 42. And when you divide, six goes into seven one time. You subtract, you get one. You bring down the zero, that's 10. Six goes into 10 one time, and you subtract and get four. So we're gonna put a one right here because 1.1 is rounded to one, just like that. And since we're on the odd side of the court, the two odd numbers are 13 and one. Remember, we cannot use the roll numbers as numbers. We can only use the numbers we come up with with our math. So one and 13 are those options. It looks like one is a three-point shot with Stephen Curry, and 13 is a two-point shot with Joel Embiid, and his field goal percentage is a 48%. Now I've got to make a choice. Steph Curry missed his last three-pointer. That doesn't mean he's going to miss this one, but to tie the game up, which is important, um, I think Joel and B can dump that right there when that, if that, that 13 spot. So I'm going to go ahead and put the player token on the 13. I'm going to, I'm going to not choose Steph Curry for this shot. And I'm going to give uh, Joel and B a chance to dunk it. In the orange spot, let's go. Oh my goodness, Joel and B got stuck on the dunk. Oh my goodness. That doesn't usually happen, but if you go to ESPN, you might be able to check that out. Sometimes the players do miss dunks. So the game changer gets the ball back. Boy, I tell you, anything can happen in NBA math. All right. Uh, coach, I'm sorry, the game changer of education rolled a seven and a one. I'm going to use this marker because this one seems like it's working better for me. Seven and one. Seven plus one is eight. Seven minus one is six. Seven times one is seven. And seven divided by one is seven, just like that. Quick math problems, quick math problems. Now, since coach, I'm sorry, the game changer is on the even side of the court, the even numbers are eight and six. Those are the options. So let's find eight and six on the court here. Um, eight is a three point shot with Natalie. And remember, she can't shoot threes. So it's not an option. I got to put that one back. And six is a green colored shot with Brittany Griner, and it's by the, by the free throw line there. So I'm going to put the player token there, and that's my only option of a shot. I would suggest not to draft players that can't shoot three-pointers because in, that, in those situations, um, they, they can't take a shot. So try to not draft players that don't have three-point shots. But the game changer made that mistake, and sometimes you got to live with it. So... Brittany Griner for a shot to take a four-point lead. Done deal. Nailed it. So now Coach Calvin has a little bit more pressure going on. We got a score of four to zero. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dice tried to get away from me. All right. Coach Calvin rolled a four and a one. Got to root for Coach Calvin now, you guys. Got to get him back in the game. Four and one. Four plus one is five. Four minus one is three. Four times one is four. And four divided by one is four. So since Coach Calvin is on the odd side of the court, the odd numbers are five and three. And remember, you cannot use the roll numbers. I want to keep saying that because sometimes students make that mistake and try to use those numbers, and that's not a part of the game. So um, the options are five and three. Five is a three-point shot with Joel Embiid, 
And three is a two-point shot with James Harden. Now, Joel Embiid's three-point percentage is 30. Uh, James Harden's two-point two point percentage is a 44. I'm going with James Harden. Fear the beard. Let's go. So I'm putting the player token on the number three. I'm putting Joel Embiid back. We're going with a different play. Don't get mad. It's all good. We'll use you next time. And we need to get on the board with James Harden. Orange area, orange area. Let's go, let's go. All right, we got Coach Calvin on the board now. Now the game could change, game changer. <laughs> All right, the score is two to four, and we got uh, five minutes left in the game. All right, game changer, what you gonna do now? All right, he rolled an eight and a two. That's pretty good because he's on the even side of the court. Eight and two. 8 plus 2 is 10, 8 minus 2 is 6, 8 times 2 is 16, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So, wow. The game changer has four options of shots. They're all even numbers. Remember, you can't use those two, the roll numbers. So, let's see what's going to happen here. Let's see what the best option to try to put Coach Calvin away. Um, 10 is a blue card with Jason Tatum. I'm going to leave that there. Um, six is a green card, which is Brittany Griner. I'm going to leave that there. You guys can't see him, but I'm laying him right here. <laughs> uh, 16 is there's 16. Oh, it's a red card. Clay Thompson for three. And four is another red card. So now I want to look at what the best percentage is. And the best percentage is Brittany Griner. Remember, I, I didn't say it, but a lot of the WNBA players have better stats, um, have some better stats than some of the NBA players, so don't always go with drafting your favorite NBA players. Um, I'm actually going to go with Brittany Griner here uh, because she's got the best stat for the option, and that option of a shot is six. So I'm going to put it on the six here, and um, I believe she made that shot the last time. So... Let's see what happens. They're trying to put the game the Coach Calvin away. Game changer. And she made that one. All right. Good shot, Brittany Griner. And the score is six to two right now. Now, with three minutes left in the game, the game's not over. So uh, don't ever feel like the game's over just because. You missed some shots or you're down. Coach Calvin rolled an eight and a six. Eight plus six is 14. Eight minus six is two. Eight times six is 48. And when you divide six into eight, get two left over, bring down net zero, and six goes into 20 three times. So 1.3 is rounded to one. Good thing. Um, I know how to do the division because if not, there would be all even numbers and that would be a turnover for Coach Calvin. So, since one is the only option, one, I'm going to put it right on that player token and that spot and it's Steph Curry's three-point shot. Now, this is really a big shot to get him back in the game. Now, let's see what happens. Steph Curry for three to get us back in this game. And he misses it. Oh, my goodness. It happens. It happens. <laughs> now, Coach, uh, get, the game changer is feeling pretty good right now, and he rolls the same number that um, Coach Calvin just rolled. <laughs> he rolled the eight and the six. So 14, two, 48. And um, I'm going to do it again just so you guys can see it. Six goes into eight. One time there, bring that six, two, bring the zero down. Six goes into 20, three times. 1.3 is rounded to one. So we're going to put that one right there. That one's not really needed, but um, our, our options here are 14, two, and 48. Uh, looks like I've lost the connection here. 
Give me one second. Go back to the meeting. All right, looks like looks like the wind was trying to knock us off here. Now, um, the options are 14, 2, and 48. So uh, two is a three-point shot with Skyler. Um, 14 is a, a dump of Brittany Griner. And 48 is, where's 48? A three-point shot with Skyler. So I can go with two three-point shots with Skyler at 29%, or I could go with Brittany Griner, um, a dump. Now, there's something called adding insult to injury. <laughs> So I'm going to go with the three-point shot because I kind of already got a lead here, and um, it won't hurt. <laughs> so I'm going to set it on the number two, and we're going to shoot a three-point shot. And this is the final shot. Um, so either way, I was going to win the game. But um, uh, <laughs> So let's see if we can get it in that little – whoops that little black line area for the three-point shot. Oh, and of course, it's a missed shot. So um, we have a score of two to six, and the game changer of education has broken the tie and now has a two-point lead in the series of Coach Calvin versus the game changer. Either way, fist bop, good game, and uh, now I'm going to unmute and uh, answer some of the questions that you may have uh, about playing NBA math groups. Okay. Uh, All right, everyone. I'm going to check this uh, chat box here. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and shoot them out to me now in regards to the game. If you would like to request a game, um, go ahead and check the chat box uh, area. Um, there's a, a link there where you can request a game. I already did. Oh, great question, uh, Deborah. You, you asked, um, can I explain how to play with four players? So the game is actually designed to play two versus two. So um, like in a, you know, in a classroom setting, when I taught the program, all of my students, um, they were co-captains and uh, I paired them up in twos um, and that's how they played the game. So two versus two. And when you play with, when the students play two versus two, what should happen is each, each time um, the students take a turn, the, the responsibilities should switch. So we don't want, let's say my partner does the math one time and then I shoot with the spinner. And then the next time um, I, my, I can do the math and my partner does the spinner. The bottom line is we, we don't want um, our students to become professional spinners. <laughs> we want them to become professional, <laughs> you know, to know their math facts and whatnot. So um, that's, how, that's how the game is really designed, the two versus two, but um, it can also be played one versus one as well. So the, once again, the real goal is to have that, that teamwork where you're both working together and deciding on what is the best option of a shot. And, um, and it helps, you know, that with that teamwork. Um, throughout the season, um, our students usually, well, throughout the season, there's a curriculum that goes along with it. And right now, um, those of you that are requesting games, you're not necessarily getting the curriculum, but you are learning how to play the, play the game. What does that have to do with anything? Excuse me? Who's here? Oh, okay.
Oh, great question. Can we have substitutes switch in during halftime? Um, technically, the way we design the game is you draft five player cards, and those are your player cards throughout the season. So switching out, um, I would say that that's fine at home. But when the students are playing in school and following the, the real curriculum, they won't, they won't be allowed to do that. So um, at home, I get it. If you know you got a card that's missing shots, you you should be able to switch at halftime. That I wouldn't mind that, but but I would let the, those students know that when you play in school, you know you're gonna have to stick with those five players that you drafted, and those will be your students that um, you try to win the title in your classroom with. And. Uh, Shari, uh, I think I answered that same question as well. At home, that's fine. But when the season starts, those five players you draft, you got to ride those players out. So that's why it's important to make sure you, you are drafting the right players. And um, But the good thing in the season, uh, we do have a trade deadline. So if you've got a player that's missing shots and you don't like how that player is responding throughout the season, um, you are able to draft at least one player. Uh, you have to actually draft one player throughout the season. That way we're not creating any uh, super teams. <laughs> it's kicking everybody's butt and uh, we wanna make it fair like that. Um, another question, how long does it take to receive a game? Uh, you, you will receive a game um, when you put your request in in about seven to 10 business days. Uh, the games come from uh, Columbus, Ohio. So depending on where you are in, in the United States, it could take a little bit longer or, you know, I wouldn't say longer than seven to 10, but business days. But um, if you're closer to Ohio, um, you probably receive it a little bit faster. Um, oh, um, so to explain overtime. Uh, if there is a if the score is tied, um, we do allow a, a two minute overtime. So uh, two minutes of overtime, you set the timer, see what happens in two minutes, uh, and and hopefully you won't have a double overtime. I actually uh, ref the game uh, tournament in Cleveland, and there were two overtimes. It just kept going and kept going, and then uh, the third graders ended up beating the eighth graders in the second overtime. <laughs> As I say, anything can happen in NBA, NBA math hoops. You can actually beat your parent in NBA math hoops. And your teacher, by the way. If you roll the dice right and uh, those in the spinner lands right, you can have a great game. I actually lost to one of my students. <laughs> and my student made it to the national championship uh, following that. So. Are there any open tournaments for one-on-ones? At the moment, we don't have any uh, open tournaments for one-on-one. -on -one. You know, our, the goal is, you know, for that teamwork and uh, for students to be able to learn how to work together and stuff like that. So um, the one-on-one -on -one isn't really something that we're offering, but two-on-two -two is how we roll. <laughs> These are great questions too, by the way. Go ahead and pick my brain as much as you can. We've got 20 more minutes throughout this webinar here. So anything that you can think of, uh, go ahead and shoot those questions out. Um, if, okay. Um, uh, the question is, can you have like four versus four, like two players playing in the first half and the other two players play in the second half? I wouldn't see why that, you know, that that's something unique you could create. I don't want to say no to that. Um, but, um, that could be a way that you could get creative with the game, but just let them know 
that if they ever make it to a tournament, it, you know, the rules, we, we've got to stick with our learn fresh rules. So, um, you know, that would be, that would be a way, like if you didn't have enough games, I could see how that would work. If you didn't have enough games and you wanted everyone to still play. Correct. Yep. That would be fine. If you didn't have enough coaches or chaperones, you could work with more kids. Yep. That would be a good way to kind of put a remix on it to get it, you know, to make it work. There's a lot of different unique ways that you can, uh, that you can get creative with the game. Um, but just make sure that you let your students know um, that those rules are only going to apply there because, you know, you don't want them thinking that they make it to a tournament and then, you know, they can use those rules because that causes a lot of confusion there. Um, for the advanced game, I don't, I don't necessarily want to go over the advanced game rules at this moment because um, at, at the time we're, we're not even um, kind of introducing that with the kids uh, because the basic math hoops game is, is our premier uh, game and the advanced game is, it is, it is a little bit more intense. Um, I would like to actually do like a separate, a separate thing explaining the advanced game so that there is no confusion. So um, <laughs> yeah. So the rules are in the game book, though, for the advanced game, but um, I, I would like to keep that kind of separate. So uh, if you want, uh, let me put my email in the, in the chat here, and uh, we can do a separate conversation about that. Also, um, I never got a chance to roll these two numbers. Uh, when you roll double zeros, it's an automatic fast break, which means that you can shoot anywhere you want on your side of the court. And what you would really want to do is you would want to look at your player card stats and whichever player card has the best stats for what you need to shoot, you would just put your player token right on that spot and go ahead and give it a shot. There's not a lot of math to do when you roll zero and zero. <laughs> so uh, before the webinar started, I was trying to practice and get a, a double zero roll, but it never worked for me. <laughs> it's hard to roll double zero. But the kids get super excited when they roll the double zeros. All right, we got about 15 more minutes. Um, if you've got any, any questions, I'm, I'm staying on until, uh, until the time is up. <laughs> oh, great question. Uh, so the question is, how has, how has math hoops helped with kids learning math? So I gotta use my experience. Um, I was actually teaching a seventh grade class in Detroit um, and I was teaching a class called the Student Success Seminar class. And when I taught that class, that was a class that focused on strengthening of ELA, math, um, social emotional learning, financial literacy, motivation, all, everything all in one. And that was like the perfect class for me. So um, my principal, she asked me to go to an MBA math hoops training. I went to the training and I fell in love with the program instantly. Um, I brought it back to my classroom. And at the time, my seventh graders, they really struggled with their math facts. So um, I pretty much turned my classroom into an MBA locker room to, to keep the kids excited and make them pumped up about this program. And when I taught the program, at first, my students, um, they were a little bit uncomfortable about the game because they didn't know their math facts so well. 
So um, I remember my students, they had their hands under the table and I, I walked over and I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> and they're like, we're, we're counting, you know, they didn't want everyone to know that they had to do this to get to their math facts. And, you know, they, they were struggling with that. And so I told everyone, hey, MBA Math Hoops is going to help you with your math facts. And it's going to help you in your math class as well. So let's not hide the fact that we are struggling with these math facts. I don't want to see any more hands under the table. If you need to count and use your fingers, it's okay to show everybody. We're, let's, let's pretend we're all on the same page. And, um, and after I did that, they started, you know, they weren't hiding doing it anymore. And in about three weeks, I noticed when I walked around and watched my students play NBA math hoops, they started to memorize those math facts. So when they rolled the dice, they were writing them out, bam, 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 really quick. And uh, they weren't using their fingers anymore. I remember their, um, their, their core math teacher, uh, Ms. Jones, she asked me, she said, well, she actually said, you know what? My st the students are starting to ask more questions and they're more confident in my class and their grades are improving. And I was like, math hoops. And she's like, what is it? You know, because she never even watched the game. And I said, well, the bottom line, it, it's giving them confidence because it's one thing to be in a seventh grade math class, learning seventh grade math, but didn't master your third and fourth grade math skills. So the fact that MBA math hoops, it, 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 it covers that and it, and it helps the kids learn those math facts while they're having fun. Now they're starting to change their behavior. Now they're starting to be more confident. Now they're not really trying to, you know, irritate other students and they're starting to feel better about their own learning. So um, MBA math hoops, it, it, it not only helps them with their math facts and, and they're able to carry that into their, their core classes, um, it also changed their behavior. Um, there's a sportsmanship contract that the kids have to sign, which pretty much um, lets the kids know that they're not going to talk trash while they're playing this game. They're going to show good sportsmanship. And let's just be honest. We know that kids play games and they talk trash. It's just Fortnite, 2K, Madden. Um, you can go on and on about different games that they like to play. And we need to we need to let that be okay. Like trash talking those games, okay, it's okay. But when you're playing NBA math hoops, there's where you turn off the trash talking. You're going to more focus on encouraging uh, your opponent and your, your partner. So once they start to understand that piece, now, um, now you're changing the culture and behavior of a student. Um, being from Detroit, I, I, I talk trash as, you know, as a, as a kid and you know even when I play games now I play 2k and of course you know it's fun so you talk a little bit of trash but when you play NBA math hoops you know it's a different game and and I used to tell my students because they were like why can't we talk trash while we play this game and I was like well you know sometimes trash talking is intimidating and let's say you play a student that doesn't talk trash and you're talking trash to that student you might win just because you're talking trash they might and I was like that's not fair so once again you can have that conversation about why it's not cool to talk trash. Also, we're noticing that there's a 37% growth on standardized tests for students that take, um, for students that play NBA math hoops. So um, you've got a lot of things that are helping our students while they're uh, playing a board game. It's like, um, it's, a, it's a disguised learning program. And uh, we don't sit here and tell our students you're getting ready to play a math quiz, but pretty much that's what they're doing and they're gonna build their confidence while playing in the NBA math hoops. Great question, can you play one versus two if you're short one player? That happened a lot of times um, in school. Of course, students um, do not have perfect attendance all the time and, and let's say your partner's not here for the day. And that means you get to be <laughs> um, Allen Iverson for the game. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you get to have, you get to um, hold it down pretty much. You, you have to do all the responsibilities. And I've watched um, one student beat two students because, you know, in that moment, he just had to make those decisions on his own. And he didn't have a partner at that time. But of course, you know, the design is for two versus two. But in a, in a situation where 
uh, students at home sick or a student, you know, had to go somewhere else, a doctor visit or something, um, you know, you'll have to hold it down with one student for that day. But it can be done and you can win that game too. <laughs> All right, we've got about 10 more minutes, so keep shooting off these great questions for me. Another really cool thing about NBA Math Hoops is we host tournaments. So um, it's a 12 lesson curriculum, and then we host tournaments where the kids get to battle other kids in their region, you know, at NBA Arena. So now the kids are getting an experience that some of them have never experienced. Some kids have never been to an NBA game and now they're at an arena, you know, battling and playing the board game and, you know, winning cool swag prizes and things like that. And we also host a national championship as well, where we select uh, 18 to 24 kids to uh, compete at a national level and we fly them all into one location and uh, it makes it an, an awesome experience. Ironically, I have uh, our 2018 national championship banner <laughs> representing uh, this. This was hosted in Detroit, where we flew uh, 18 to 20 kids out, and those kids competed. And uh, kids from Utah brought home the title, the Utah Jazz. And that was a real cool experience, the teacher, the parent. Um, were able to fly out and it was a weekend of STEM events and uh, meeting kids and whatnot. Uh, we haven't hosted any tournaments in Toronto just yet, but uh, on our back end, we are um, in communication with, with folks from Toronto and we are uh, definitely working on that. And they won the championship last year too. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we really want to work on that. And just to let you know, every Wednesday I'll be hosting these webinars. So if you know someone else that could benefit from uh, learning about this amazing uh, educational board game, um, you can uh, give them the link as well. Every Wednesday in April. And who knows? <laughs> it could spill over into May as well. If, um, if anyone would like to follow our social media accounts, um, you can go to NBA Math Hoops, uh, at NBA Math Hoops for Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, my Instagram is the game changer underscore of education. Um, you can see everything that is going on with NBA Math Hoops on there as well. Once again, the game changer underscore of education. Um, the question is, is there a rating system for the official league? Uh, can you elaborate on that question? I'm not sure what you mean by that. A rating system, what, what type of rating system? Um, oh, I get what you're saying. So, so the question I, I believe is, um, how, how are students selected for the tournaments? I, I think that is what the question is. And here's what happens. Um, when you're the educator, you're going to create a win loss record that really helps. And then you're, you're able to, um, find out what, who your top teams are. And usually, uh, each teacher is allowed to bring two teams. So a total of four students to the tournament unless we offer more spots, depending on the situation. So uh, nine times out of 10, it'll be your two top teams. And uh, those four students will 
will hold down that school and hopefully bring back, bring back the trophy and some swag. <laughs> These are great questions too. I I I love to uh, I love for people to pick my brain and and uh, and, and share you know this cool program. I I'm a retired school teacher. I taught for 20 years in Detroit, and my last year teaching this program really uh, I can't say enough. Um, you know, usually as an educator, you have to get creative and come up with your own way of reinventing yourself every year. And I was cool with that, but when this program came, I was kind of, I was like, I wish I would have made this game. I didn't think of, I didn't think of that. But um, to be able to, you know, bring it across the United States and globally, um, that that's uh, it's very special to me because, you know, when you're an educator, you really are trying to, you know, save the world, if you will. You know, we're superheroes in our own way, and we have to try to find out the best creative ways to keep our kids excited and. And a lot of kids love sports. And even some kids that don't like sports buy into this game as well. Um, the, que the next question is how many students play at the tournament? Uh, it just depends on the team. Um, we, we connect with the team and, and we find out what, what's a cap number that they would like to have to host the tournament. And I've done tournaments um, that had 30 students, 60 students, 100 students, close to 200 students. It just depends on uh, what, what team uh, is, is backing the tournament. And, uh, and then we, we reach those numbers. When you go to uh, um, mbamathhoops.org and um, the Instagram of MBA Math Hoops and the Twitter of MBA Math Hoops, uh, you'll be able to see like some amazing photos and pictures uh, and video of of some of the tournaments to see all the students there. You can also go to YouTube and click NBA Math Hoops and you'll see a ton of tournaments, national championships, and, um, and you'll be blown away by that. <laughs> so thank God for the internet and uh, the social media because you know, we can say things, but once you, when you see it, it shows you a, a whole different level. And then you're able to show that to your students and then your students uh, get super excited about it. Got about three more minutes here. Once again, in the chat section, uh, if you'd like to request a game, if you don't have one yet, um, you can click that. You can um, go to that link there, and uh, if you had any questions, uh, my, my email is also in the chat area, calvin at learnfresh.org. Yes, I can, I can actually, um, I could do a one-on-one -on -one with you, so, um, you can shoot me an email and if I'm not mistaken, there may, I may be able to find a video that's already done for you for that. So um, I may not have to reinvent the wheel and I can give you that information. Just shoot me an email and uh, I can help you with that. But what I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't do this. Um, I would make sure that your students are comfortable playing the basic game because the advanced game is not used at any tournaments or anything like that. That's more to kind of take it up a notch once the kids get, you know, kind of comfortable playing the game. And, you know, it's, it's actually for, for, old, for older students. NBA Math Hoops is designed, the basic NBA Math Hoops game, which is the one I'm explaining here, is designed for students in grades third through eighth grade. So um, just to give you that information. All right, we got one more minute. Countdown. One more minute. Shoot out those questions if you got one more left. Or, but remember, you got my email. So if you if you think of something later, reach out to me and uh, 
and I'll squ get it squared away. So uh, thank you again for joining our MBA Math Hoops webinar. webinar. Uh, this is Coach Calvin, AKA the Game Changer of Education, signing out. And uh, I will see you all next Wednesday. Have a great rest of the day and stay safe.